information technology skills course code 402 database management system with open office org base basic concepts in this information age looking for information every now and then is a common phenomena that's called query we search for the information we give a query string and in response we get the results listed out the result we get come from some sort of database now what is database in simple terms we can say that a database is an organized collection of data just like in library where all the books are organized in various genres across various cupboards similarly data is organized within the database in the form of tables just like the books in racks in a library now what happens when we submit a query into a database through a search engine look at a simple example here where a person is looking for the flights which are departing on a particular date january 10 and before 10 am so he types that query is there now if you look at the query carefully you will see there are two keywords key terms here january 10 and 10 am the database table which is containing all the details of the flights so one by one the records in the table are searched and as the query is being processed one by one, the matching records are marked and finally the details of those flights which match that criteria are listed to the user. This is what happens behind the scenes of a search engine or whenever we submit a query to a search engine or on a uh, website or to a database directly. So here if you see uh, Juicy Fruits is the fruit shop whose fruit details are there in this uh, simple tablet format. Fruit name, size, maximum retail price, quantity in stock, quantity sold on which date and how much amount is earned after each sale that all is there in this table. This is maintained by the shop. So let us see a simple example in this context. There are two sizes of apples big and small with their distinct MRPs and the sale of 1st January and 3rd January is shown here. Now if I make another transaction, another sale of uh, big apples, the MRP is 110, I will add the new record, I will add the new entry in the sales register like this. Uh, 4th Jan I sold 10 kgs of big apples and after the sale I earned 1100 bucks and now the quantity in stock is 15 that is 25 minus 10 that is also updated here another sale I did on the same date 8 kgs of the small apple sold and the quantity in stock is updated from 20 minus 8 that is 12 so after every sale these entries are being done in a stock register but did you notice something odd here after every entry I have to again and again repeatedly enter the fruit name, the size of the fruit, the MRP of the fruit for every transaction. So this is something which we are doing again and again is called redundant data. This should not happen. If I am making a sale, I should just enter the sales details, rest of the details should be taken care of automatically or I should not repeat the name of the fruit, its size and MRP which is of course fixed. It should not be entered again and again. So let us see what is the solution to this basic problem. What we can do instead of one table or one register, we break down the register into two parts. One register is, let us say, fruit register, the other is sales register. Fruit register contains all the fruit details and whenever a sale is made, only sales register is updated. But the problem is, how does the sale register record which fruit has been sold? So that question needs to be answered. So one very good solution is that we identify each fruit with a code and the same code if we use in sales register, then the things can be tracked easily. If I have the fruit code of in the sales register, I can go and 
open the fruit register i can look for that particular matching fruit code and i can get the details of the fruit which has been sold so in databases the tables multiple tables are maintained like this if we do not have unique values in the table we create codes for every record we have a unique code and which helps us in keeping track of the details of the item in the table so coming back to our own example where we were maintaining redundant data let us see how the things would be like now so we have now fruit and sales table and i made a sale of 10 kg on 4th of jan i made another sale of 8 kg on 4th of jan and what i did is i entered in the sales table only the fruit code rest of the things are available in fruit table so this way tables are logically related this relation can be used to track the details across the two tables so if you notice in fruit table fruit code is appearing only once that is every fruit code is unique in fruit table fruit code is identifying each record uniquely in the fruit table such a field which uniquely identifies a record in the table is called primary key field so fruit code here is a primary key field and it cannot have duplicate values and null values null means no information so it cannot be blank and it cannot have duplicate values in fruit table but if you notice the duplicate values are appearing in the sales table in fruit code in sales table fruit code is not a primary key here fruit code is an ordinary field which can store duplicate values because every now and then we will be selling different fruits so fruit codes will be repeated the matching fruit code in the fruit table will give us the details of the fruit which has been sold so such a field which holds the matching key values matching primary key values from the master table such a field in transaction table or in the child table is called foreign key field so in sales table fruit code is foreign key in fruit table the fruit code field is primary key so normally such tables having primary keys are called master tables they are usually not modified after each transaction and the tables which are modified after each transaction the tables which record the details of transactions they are classified as transaction tables moving further databases also allow automatic calculations so any field which is containing the calculated values should also be eliminated so in our sales register we were always calculating the sale amount since in database this can be calculated by a simple formula so here we need to get rid of sale amount field also so do not keep calculated fields in a database the reason is databases allow the automatic calculations so after all this looking at the final shape of the tables we have this fruit table master table sales table the transaction table fruit table is storing the fruit name size mrp and quantity in the stock for the fruits for each fruit in the shop and fruit code is uniquely identifying each fruit record in this table sales table is recording every transaction every sale done for every fruit and it is related with fruit table through the field fruit code here fruit code is foreign key in fruit table fruit code is primary key open the open office org application and on the first screen click on the option database now select the option create a new database and click on next button on the next screen let the option be selected yes register the database for me by this option open office is aware that you are creating this database so simply click finish here it will ask to save your database file by some name so locate the folder where you need to save this database give some relevant name to the database file notice that the file extension is .odb open office database after typing the name of the file simply click on save button and your database file will be created once this is done 
you see the screen which is showing various menus various toolbars and we also see the interface which has on the left hand side database objects listed tables queries forms and reports when you click on tables in the tasks certain options are appearing create table in design view and other options so we take up create table in design view because we need to create a new table for our fruit shop so here when we click on create table in design view we get this table design interface where we can mention the field names every field will have some data type so we have the field name fruit code very first we are keeping fruit code some numeric data type there are so many data types available here so we are taking integer data type for each field we see the properties below fruit code i am taking number type so here the first field is fruit code which is number type and below are the properties of the field length i am keeping 5 only that is number of digits in the code entered 5 is enough then the second field is fruit name this will be obviously text type fruit length uh, for i think 100 is enough for uh, fruit name then coming down to the third field which is mrp this is a monetary type of field this is going this is going to hold money figures so i better take decimal data type and entry is of course required mandatory entry is required for mrp decimal places i have mentioned two and for fruit name also the entry required has to be yes because there is no fruit without a name so we have this here now fruit code fruit name and mrp done as you remember fruit table had primary key field let us see how do we create it but first of all let's try saving the table we simply click yes here we give the name to the table let us say fruit now let's see what happens when we click on okay oh it is warning me it is giving the warning no primary key has been defined so should a primary key be created now automatically no we are not going to create the primary key automatically we are not going to click on yes we will define our primary key fruit code ourselves and we are not going to save the table without primary key so what should we click here we cancel the operation of saving we go to fruit code right click here beside the fruit code and here we select primary key option so fruit code is primary key if you notice this key icon is appearing besides fruit code field now we can easily save the table we give the name fruit and this is saved so here it is our table is listed here so if you see i can edit the table open the table back i can change the name editing the table back uh, deciding the structure further let's see let's add more fields here you remember quantity in stock field was also there so i'm taking it number type here length is just fine but entry required yes that has been done here so this way various properties are also set fruit table is ready for data entry so what we do we open fruit table i can double click on it to open the table also or i can right click and select open here it is the fruit code is waiting for the entry let's say 101 the fruit name is mango mrp 110 rupees per kg that is and current quantity in stock is 50 so i entered one record and i saved it so my table is having one record which is entered there now let us see what all other further change can be done in the structure of the table we already have four fields fruit code let us add one more field here that is the size of the fruit so size of the fruit is text type entry is required and there is another property in the fields property that is default value the value which is entered automatically if the data entry is skipped so default value for size is big so by default size will be big in the fruit table let us try to save this table let's see entry was mandatory for size field please remember and here is the error if entry is mandatory then the previous record which we had entered it does not have size entered earlier and that's why the mandatory entry required yes 
is clashing with the previous data entry which we did. So here, when what happens is later after entering certain records, if you are making changes in the table structure, sometimes that table definition can clash with the existing records. So I'm making entry required no, and I'm saving the table like this so that it does not clash with the previously entered record. Then what I will do is I will open this table for data entry. That's called table data view. Here size is waiting. I mentioned the size for the first report which I had entered earlier. I close the table, save this. Now I go back to the table design view. And now I can simply say entry required yes for size table. It will work. It's not clashing with any records existing already in the table. So if such a situation arises, you have to be very careful. You have to take care how the structure of the table has to be changed. And that is why a lot of planning is required before designing the tables. So here what we have learned, we learned about how the table structure is defined, how the data entry is done, how the tables are created in the database, what things we have to keep in mind while designing the table for each field, how do we define the property of that field? and what is the importance of data type for each field. We also saw how a field is decided to be a primary key and how do we set a field as primary key. So now your table is ready and all you have to do is you populate it with all the data which is required for the fruit shop. So we have this basic understanding of database. We have the basic understanding of a simple table created in the database. In further videos, we will learn about how to work with multiple tables. So do not forget to watch the next video. Keep enjoying and keep learning. See you in the next video.